Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. A year ago, I made a video showing how I like to change and configure Xterm, and I thought I would redo it for two reasons. Number one, I'm better at making videos now than I was a year ago. And number two, I stumbled across a forum where some people were having a discussion that had watched my video, and they were having a discussion about my configuration file wasn't working for them in FreeBSD. So today, I'm going to take a look at it. So, let's get to it. So the other day, I was searching through Google. Now, normally I don't use Google Search. I always use DuckDuckGo. But this day, I happened to be using Google Search. And I stumbled across a link that has had my video in it. And it wasn't my link or anything, but it was my video. I clicked it on and it brought me here. So now we're at the free BSD website in the forum section. And you can see that's my video. And if you click on this icon here, it's going to play. And then below it, there's a whole discussion about how uh, someone called my video a simple video. Another person said that you shouldn't learn how to configure things from watching YouTube videos. Uh, I mean, you can read it for yourself. Uh, and they're discussing back and forth on how my configuration file doesn't work. And actually, this is the configuration file here. I had it in the show notes. And I also had it for you to download from my GitLab repository. And I showed you this in the video. And, and they're discussing how it doesn't work. And I think somebody said that you shouldn't learn how to do things from promotional videos. Well, I wouldn't think that my video was a promotional video. I mean, I don't make any money from my videos. Uh, I don't know the people who write code for X term or anything like that. I'm just trying to help people out. If you read all the, the notes here and that, people are saying that my configuration file wasn't working for them in FreeBSD. Now, when I made the video a year ago, I didn't even know what FreeBSD was. <laughs> now, as of today, I've already made several videos on how to install FreeBSD and how to configure it and so forth. But anyways, let's go and take a look at it. Okay, so today I'm in a virtual machine of FreeBSD with the awesome window manager. And if you don't believe me, let's, I'm going to click it on. Let's open up Xterm. Well, let's just do an HTOP first. I always like to do HTOP. And this is a virtual machine with four processors, four gigs of RAM, and a two gig swap. Well, actually, a two and a half gig swap. Now, for those of you that have been following my channel, you know that I don't do swap normally. But the installer, the FreeBSD installer, automatically gave me a two and a half gig swap. So, hey, I didn't fight with it. <laughs> so let's quit out of there and let's clear the screen. Let's do a Neo fetch, just in case you don't believe I'm in FreeBSD. So I'm in FreeBSD 14.0 release part five. And I'm using the Zash shell, right? And of course, my terminal emulator is Xterm. And as you can see, we have a black screen. We have a nice large readable color font. Let's clear the screen. And if I want to make the font uh, larger, I hold the shift button down and hit the plus sign. And I can make it larger. If I want to make it smaller, I hold the shift button down and I hit the minus sign. Ooh, that's really small. Now let's do a history. Now let's say I want to copy and paste. So let's say I want to copy and paste LS. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to hold the shift button down and hit insert. There it is and it inserts it. There you go. Now let's clear the screen. Now my configuration file is this. Let's um, type in vim x resources, hit enter. So that's my configuration file. So the first line tells what kind of font to use. 
So I'm using mono space bold size 15. And the second line, which says reverse video true, gets rid of the uh, the white background and makes it a black background. So let's get out of there. Let's quit. Now let's say I'm going to change that. I'm going to get rid of that file. Well, I'm not going to delete it though. I'm going to change the name of it so it doesn't work. Let's move X resources to X resources period save. So I'm changing the name that's going to disable the file. Okay. Let's hit enter. Let's quit there. Quit out of there. Go to the login screen and put my password back in and let's open up Xterm. And there's Xterm. So that's the way Xterm is on default. You got the bright white background and small font. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the file back to its proper name. So it works. So I'm going to do move X resources to period X resources. And I'm just going to take out that period save at the end. And I'm going to close my X term. I'm going to log out of awesome window manager. And I'm going to log back in to the awesome window manager. I'm going to open up my terminal. And there it is. Now, let's say you want to change the default size of the font. Vim into X resources. And if I go to the end of line one and change that 15 to a 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20, then the default font will be larger. If I want to make the default font smaller and I change it to 12 or 13 or whatever one I change it to, and the default font will be smaller. Now, I don't know why the uh, configuration file wasn't working for those people with FreeBSD. Now, for sure, you got to put a font in there that's in your system, right? And you have to type it properly. So you have to type it exactly as it should be as that font is in your system. So you're going to have to do a search in your system to see what font you have. And if you don't want to use the font I'm using, you got to make sure you're using a font that's in your system. Now, I don't know if that's the reason why it wasn't working for them. I really don't know. So they were having this discussion in the forum. And the thing is, no one ever asked me for help. So I looked through the messages underneath my video and no one asked me for help. So, hey, what can I say? Now, in the video, I showed another thing. And that's this. Also, this file, you can download this file from my GitLab repository. And I'm going to leave these commands in the show notes. So you can just make your own file. Your period X resources file it has to be a capital X. And you can put this in there yourself. So I'm going to leave it in the show notes, this command. And this actual file is free for you to download from my GitLab repository. And the link for my GitLab repository is also in the show notes of every video. So let's get out of here. And if you just LL for a sec, this is the file here. Okay. You have to make sure it's a period capital X. Okay. Now also, let's just go to the bottom of the screen. In my original video, I also showed this, this period xnetrc file. So let's vim into it, vim xnetrc. So if you see on line one, now I have a hashtag in there because I deactivated the line. So if you see in line one, I have this line xrdb space period capital X resources. Now I deactivated the line. In my original video, I told you to put that line in there, but that line you only need in there if you're logging into your system from the TTY with Stardex. So my period capital X resources file works automatically if you're using a login manager, but if you're logging in with Stardex from the TTY, then you need this line to be activated. And 
So we're going to delete the hashtag and go up. So you need that line to be activated in order for the period X resources file that we created to work. But if you're logging in with the login manager, you don't need it. Okay. So we can just uh, keep the hashtag there because we're using a login manager. And I forgot to fully explain that part in my original video. Another thing too is that you need to have Xorg installed in your system because if you don't have Xorg installed in your system, it's not going to work. And also, not only do you need Xorg installed, you might want to make sure you have Xorg-XRDB installed as well. Now, the thing is, is that when I made this free BSD installation, which I did on video, by the way, I didn't do anything special to make my Xterm look like this. All I did was is copy from my GitLab repository my period X resources file, which I already showed you and I'm going to show you again. That's this file here. I copied it over from, I downloaded it and copied it over from my GitLab repository. And let's just zoom back into it again. And that's it. And that's the file. So you see, my Xterm configuration file works in FreeBSD. And that's it. In this video, I demonstrated that my Xterm configuration file does work in FreeBSD. And as a matter of fact, it works wherever I've used it. I've used it in virtual machines. I've used it in tons of virtual machines in pure Debian, Linux Mint, Linux Mint based on Debian, Ubuntu, Manjaro, Antex Linux, MX Linux, FreeBSD, GhostBSD. It works wherever I've used it in all my virtual machines and I have four computers at home, real bare metal computers, and it works in all of them. So I don't know why it wasn't working for those people. I wish they would have uh, asked me for help in the comments. Maybe I would have been help able to help them. Maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't have been able to help them. I don't know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time. I am the Lennox Mensch.